I'm actually going to record this because I've answered this question so many times. <laughs> I'm going to record it and have it on record. So Dr. Neil, Neil Reardon, um, he does his um, stem cell therapy in Panama, right? Where the regulation is different, that he's able to um, uh, grow and expand stem cells um, to huge numbers. And if you want to do that in this country, then you have to go through IND applications, so investigational new drug. And that's extremely costly, very difficult. So, so he decided to go to Panama where that's not required. So he could do that. So um, I've met him in person. You know, we, we've, we've talked about this. So he knows who I am. And I, I said, you know, Neil, you know, why are you splitting up your dose? I understand that people are in Panama, there's a <clears throat> time and why are you, I know you're splitting in three doses. Why is that? And one reason is that <clears throat> there's a potential of side effects, which I've never had with my patients, but there's a potential of side effects. So they're splitting in doses. Um, the other reason I, and he said is because multiple intervals works better. And I said, okay, um, then can you tell me what ideal interval is? Because if someone, you said multiple interval instead of single bolus works better, um, you know, you have a constraint because people are visiting Panama, they can't stay there forever. So what do you think <coughs> is ideal interval? And his answer is, was, nobody knows that. So there, there's your scientific base for what he does. So I can tell you what happens when you expand cells, okay? You expand cells by, by putting them on a Petri dish, right? You grow them until it's confluent. So it covers the entire dish bottom. On the, on the petri dish or, or the vessel, you know, the container, there's nutrients. There's, there's nutrients to support the cells, to help them grow, right? Induce them to grow. Once it's full, the bottom is full, they divide it by quarters and they move a quarter into the next dish. So that's one passage. Now they're moving on to have a different passage. So you can keep doing this. The problem is, first of all, when the cells, are just in a free medium. Uh, they're happily getting a lot of nutrients. Most of the time, they may be able to divide by, you know, one stem cell, they'd be divided into two daughter cells. However, if you ever get to the edge of the plate, if you're not careful, if you miss a, a couple hours, you know, at the edge of the plate, once the cells start to grow on, on the edge, guess what? It doesn't have enough nutrients. Then it starts to differentiate. So the cells no longer are stem cells. So, so it will differentiate, differentiate into a stem cell and, and a daughter cell. So daughter cells are not stem cells. So if you're doing that, then you're gonna have a lot of daughter cells. What happens with daughter cells? That they have surface receptors that expresses the antigens of the donor. And that's when you can increase your chance of rejection. So when you're not careful, when you're doing that, um, then you're, you're increasing your chance of introducing all these recept new receptors the body doesn't recognize. So I just talked with somebody two days ago. She had gone through treatment in Panama. And she said, yeah, the third injection, the third IV infusion, I got really sick. I was like, well, I rest my case. You know, why are you, if it's the same dose every time, why did you get really sick, right? Your body just got primed to, to, to recognize, oh my God, these are antigens, you know, that I just got primed, I need to attack. So that, that's one thing. Um, there's also research done. Um, if you watch that video, our OMSCs created equal on YouTube, so I show a research that's done on expanded versus native cells. So native means you've never touched it. It came from the body and you didn't do anything to it. You didn't grow it and, and you, know, you didn't use an enzyme. So that's what it is. Um, and you give it back to the person. And the expanded cells, which means it has been grown in culture, um, they compare the efficacy of how effectively they're able to exert their benefits. So when they compared, so let's say 10,000, so I have the graph, at 10,000 native cells, the benefits is this much, right? And they gave 10 times as much, so 100,000 of native cells, and then you get a you know, dose dependent more benefit. But next time they gave, gave 10 times that number by using expanded cells, right? 1 million of expanded cells. Guess what happened to the efficacy? So the first two are here, and the third one becomes this. So you, at 10 times the number, you lose your efficacy because of all these different factors, because things change when you start to grow cells. I, I always tell people cells don't grow on trees. If you put God's intention, God's creation in the human body, 
we're not a petri dish. We don't have freaking edges, right? The cells is always based by adequate nutrition. And then when it's divide, it divide the way it's supposed to divide. So, and there's a, there's a lifespan. There are only three months, about three months it lives in the body because if you have manip manipulated cells, taking them out of their hibernation and then put them into the bloodstream and put them to work to fight inflammation and to start to secreting the work, then there's a lifespan. They don't live forever. No cells live forever. That's why we have less and less stem cells as we grow older to almost none. So, so you have a nutrition rate. So the cells don't really stay in your body for very long. First of all, they stay in the primitive form. Some stay in your body, but guess what? When a primitive cell stay in your body, it actually is able to adapt to your body. So it doesn't ex express the kind of surface receptors that it would express in a Petri dish. And this is what's really fascinating. That's why when people do um, local core blood transfusions with no matching at all, there's no rejection. Whereas if you do blood transfusion uh, or bone marrow transfusion, right? Bone marrow transfusion, you have to match the hell out of it. And there's still a chance for rejection. This is how vastly different young cells are from mature cells. So, so as soon as we recognize this, and then as soon as you know, we've stopped asking silly questions, you know, that we recognize young life has ability to adapt. And that's the value of using the youngest cell possible, you know, within <clears throat> ethical limitations. So that's, um, so when people say, oh, I have all these cells, guess what? You got 120 million cells. I give you, let's say I give you 10 or 20 million cells within days. It's going to way surpass the 120 million and it's going to surpass billions. So, and, 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 and it's without manipulation. So if you are patient enough, you respect God's ingredient instead of trying to mess with it, that in your body, that's all going to happen. That's why, why our results are so remarkable. That's why we've treated people who have gone to Panama and then come to me telling me that this was better than what they got in Panama. So that's, you know, when you, when you try to manipulate, um, yes, one thing you can do, you actually are getting exosomes. So, you know, what, when, they, when they expand the cells in culture, right, the cells start to spill out and, and spit out um, exosomes. So when Panama Clinic, when they give you this, this you know, this, um, this whole bag of solution, not only has cells, some are stem cells and some are not, but also it has all these exosomes. And that's one reason some people felt immediately better. You know, great, you know, we can give you exosomes too. And guess what the cells do? The cells will go into your body and secrete exosomes. That's what they do. And, you know, one statistic is for 400,000 of MSCs in the human body within 12 weeks, it will secrete about 80 billion exosomes. So, and not only are these exosomes sustained release, according to your body's needs, right? So, so they're sustained. They're not going to be broken down all at once and then they're gone. Now we have a sustained, it's like a little sustained pharmacy that give you drug, give you drug and give you drug. And, and those drugs are more targeted to your needs. So because cells are that smart, that's why <coughs> they made us. They're just that smart. So I don't know how it works. I'm always amazed when people do so well. You know, I feel like a hero, but I realize that the cells are just so damn smart and they did everything. All I did is put in the human body and, and that's is probably the most elegant way of helping people, right? The cells just has this intelligence and do everything else. I always tell people, I said, this is the first time in history that we are infusing intelligence. We have infused chemicals, herbs, you know, compounds, a group of compounds, you know, everything, but we never give you real intelligence and human intelligence. Imagine that. So, so that's what made you and we're tapping into that. Um, so, so that's what I say to people who think Panama is the end all be all um, when I know is not. Um, so, so, you know, the story just needs to be set straight. Um, unfortunately, you know, that, you know, uh, Neo is a billionaire, you know, they have, you know, and, and Mel Gibson dad went there. So they've got some, uh, yeah, there's got some quite a bit of mileage from that, but, but that's okay. You know, truth is going to come out and I'm not going to stop talking, you know, telling people the truth. So that's, uh, that's what it is. So I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>